Hi everyone, it's Eddie at Eddie Makes Art, and today I'm going to talk to you about something that um, I watched the other day. It was a video from ePapery Designs, and um, it was Erin on the video, and she talked about um, a new series that they're doing. And the first video was introducing us to the color wheel, um, but it's specifically the color theory. It's a color theory aid for junk journalers which is great because that's what I do. But I also do gel printing, so I thought, what if uh, I apply the same basic principles of this to my gel printing? And um, it's a really good breakdown of, of, of how the color wheel works um, and what colors work well together and, um, and all that. And uh, so sh they have provided an e-papery on their website, which I'll link below. They provided this free download. It's eight pages. And first you get your color wheel and you get all your different colors. And then down here you have your neutrals and alternate neutrals. On the second page, it's, um, they explain some colorful, helpful, helpful color theory terms. Um, for example, like what is a hue? A color's position around the wheel in its brightest, purest version. So, you, so the top, the, the outer ring, outermost ring is your hue. Um, and then talk about saturation, tint, shade, tone, and then colors also have a temperature, warm to cool. And you know, there's more uh, definitions, um, there's uh, breakdowns of complementary colors, split complementary colors, triadic complementary, triadic colors rather. Um, and then there's tetradic, tetradic, I don't know how to pronounce it. That word right there. Um, and what this is actually, it's four hues. Remember the hue is the outer ring of the color wheel. Uh, four hues that appear in a rectangle shape on the color wheel, which are two sets of complementary colors. A tetradic plate palette can easily look chaotic and it's best to use one to two hues as the dominant color and the others as the accents. So really, and, and it shows you, you know, using the, the the pie slices from the color wheel to literally show you what is gonna work well together. Um, so I really enjoy this and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the series. Um, the last page is analogous. And that what that means is two to four hues immediately adjacent on the color wheel an analogous palette is one of the simplest and most appealing palettes. I call it the rainbow, the rainbow section, because if you see here, it's it's things that are it's colors that are you know pretty much next to each other as you go around the wheel. Um, but what I thought we'd do today, I want to do a triadic um, color palette. The triadic color palette is three hues that are evenly spaced around the wheel like a triangle. So as you see here, you've got red here, you've got your blue, and then over here to finish it off is a green. Um, additional shades and tints and tones of the base hues can be added for variety. A triadic color palette is bold and vibrant. So I decided to go with red, green, and blue. Um, so we're gonna use this aside. I picked out these three colors from Liquitex Basics Acrylics. There's uh, the primary blue, and that's a semi-transparent. Uh, a phthalo green, also a semi-transparent. And then we have the cadmium red medium hue also semi-transparent. So, and then we're gonna work with a stencil, and this is from PM Artist Studio. Um, this is the Craftsman Square Lattice stencil. It's an eight by 10, it comes in, uh, I believe the five by seven, and a nine by 12. Um, and you can find them here at, um, sorry, it's pmstudioartist.com, and this is a stencil. They're made from Upo, 
It's a 74 pound UPO, which is 100% propylene, polypropylene synthetic material. Um, but it's sturdy. This is a design, this is one of their very own designs. Um, and I really, really like it. It's got um, your squares and circles, and it's a really fun pattern. Um, let's start with the color on the bottom. Should we start with the red or blue or green? Which should we start with? I don't think it matters. So I've no, I haven't done this before. We're just playing around. So I'm going to add some red. We'll do a red layer. And then we'll go from there. I hope everyone is doing well today. I am well myself, having a good time, making videos, playing with stuff, and having a good time. All right, we're going to lay the stencil down right on top. And I'm going to get a piece of paper. Usually you can use you, know, you can use tissue, but right now I'm just I'm gonna, I want to get a um, a print of the squares on my better paper. Okay, so, and you're removing the extra paint that's in there, and then I'm gonna come in with a piece of tissue and just kind of take up any of the areas that are left, and as you smoosh around gently with your fingertips you see what's what was left behind it'll be picked up by the tissue okay. all right I wouldn't recommend trying to do this step with um, with your brayer or or your baron um, I just prefer to do it with tissue. It's, it's more gentle. All right, we got all that we're gonna get up. Um, and then we're gonna add the next layer. And do, actually what we could do is we could pick this up now. We're gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna brayer off my stencil here. And just like rub off the excess onto my rare sheet. Got some there. And then I'm gonna let that dry. It's almost dry. That that paint dries pretty quickly. And I didn't put a thick layer on it, which is good. Um, so I thought maybe what we do is we'll do some blue at the top and green at the bottom. Trying to be conservative. I don't want to overload my gel plate. That is a strong blue. I love it though. The primary blue. Okay. Get a little green. That, this green goes a long way. The phthalo green. All right, and we're gonna start. We'll start with the blue. Might need more, but let me just go through the blue and the green. Just go straight across. And then blend it up a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue because that edge here on the right is gonna need it. And I just wanna make sure I get all of that. Paper down. And we'll use our Baron to make sure we have good contact with the plate and the paint and the paper. This is what's called burnishing. You want to make sure you get the edges. And Patricia Klein um, Carmichael over at, or is it Patricia Carmichael, Mark Carmichael Klein? It's Patricia from, she's the P and P and M. She's the queen. And um, she was showing us the other day that she uses this part of the, her baron. She also has the handmade wooden baron made by Anthony Cody. 
And you can find him on Etsy at um, Anthony Woodworks, I believe, or Cody Woodworks. Um, I'll link him below too. And he makes these by hand out of um, found wood. Uh, this particular one is big leaf maple. All right, and so she was showing us that you could use the top to go around the edges nicely and get those with good contact. Now this should be ready to come up. I'm gonna start peeking here. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Well, that is kind of cool. The red works really well. Kind of looking, it looks like uh, an ocean kind of nautical kind of vibe. All right, that's one. Let's go ahead and do another one. And maybe this time we'll start with some blue. What neutral? Let's use a parchment. Just uh, maybe a little bit more blue. Like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this, so we're we're doing this all together. Give that a nice mix on the plate. It gives you a beautiful, creamy blue. And I want to pick this up. So we start with a solid background. We have our background. Next, let's put our stencil down. And I wanna put some color through it. Actually, what I wanna do is put the color first, then the stencil down. And then I'm gonna do what we did with the other um, image, which was the other print, which is take off the stencil and that print that's left behind, we'll put onto there, onto our blue background. So. Start with the green. Let's do green. And maybe do that and do a little bit of this with the green. Let's see. Let's see what we get. It's fun to play. Very good, so you don't get like crazy patches, big patches of colors of color, yeah, unless that's what you want. Now I'm not worried about picking up every little bit because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift this, take my blue background and set it right down. We should be able, that should have been still wet enough to give us a pickup. Now it's not gonna be super contrast because, you know, they're both darker, but Start layering. Let's see, get that cool effect in the back. And then let's come back in. And we're not going to clean that. What we'll do, let's get another stencil. Okay, the 
This is another PM Artist stencil. This one's called uh, Going Daisies. So let's put down some daisies. How do I want this? Yeah. Okay. Are we covered? We're covered. Let me go a little bit more this way. Okay. So I want to first decide what color I want to do underneath. Um, and we'll start there. We'll do it. We'll do a layer. And then we'll add it to our this print here. And you see what you do with what happens when you layer the red with the green? Get that really cool. Kind of almost 3D effect. Okay, so let's start with. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the red. Instead of the parchment, I'm going to use some white, just, just a little bit. Oops. See, don't move your brayer down. Okay. Give it a nice mix. Stencil down. Pick up sheet. Again, I'm not too worried this time about getting every single little bit and piece from there. Just try to get most of it. And if there's some big areas like this that have too much, I just go in and pick it up. All right, let's take the stencil off. We're going to lay him down. Let's see. Again, this is just me playing around. It may not look good. But we're going to try. All right. Let's see here. Not too shabby. You see, get that cool. With, the, with adding the white, it gives it a little more of a uh, a contrast a little more detail so that is i like that print all right let's try another one we still got some daisy down on there let's uh first how about we start with some blue is there this coming up that's good that's dry a little blue now, with the blue, another neutral, or is that sheet? Let's remember to talk about neutrals. You got black, white, cream, and gray. We've used white, we've used cream, haven't used a gray. I have a gray here. Find it. All right, this is iridescent graphite. Um, it is mainly black but it has mica in it and it's an opaque but i think it'll it'll be fun with this with this blue be too aggressive just you know gentle nudge that's coming out kind of cool let's name it some tissue more blue 
that I want. Want to leave behind, I should say. Uh, if you're wondering, this is uh, just everyday wrapping tissue. Um, I also use carnival tissue, but for stuff like this, when I'm experimenting, I don't use it because it is on the pricier side. But it's a great tissue. It's a wet strength. This one is not. Like I said, it's just an everyday tissue. But it works for my purposes here. Alright. So that's that. Let's do another color here. I'm going to go ahead. I want to do a white. Just white. Because I think with the white, it'll give us a little bit of a glow around the edges of our daisies. That's my... That's my thought process. Get in there nice. I'm not too worried about 100% coverage. I would just want enough that it's going to give some white along the edges of the, of the flowers. Cleanup sheet. Okay, again, I'm gonna grab another piece of tissue. So we've used the blue, we've used gray and white. So we've used one of the colors and then two neutrals. This is white. Right there, get that up. So then let's come in. I'm gonna let this dry for a minute. I should think I can pull more white off. So I'm just gonna get another piece of tissue here. See if we can get more off. Clean this guy off. Hmm. A little too much blue paint on there. Gonna... Alright, let's wipe the hands. See this this is basically how I experiment when the camera's not on. Um because that's how I'm gonna learn is by uh, trial and error. And I think we got two good prints so far. Two nice, nice prints with our PM Artist Studio stencils. Ooh, ooh. Okay. All right, so I think we're gonna go over this in the red. So we're gonna do the red. Actually, I uh, correct myself. I'm going to do the green. I have an idea, but let's just do the green. Now, what we're doing is we're building up the layers on the um, on the plate of the edges of the stencil so that when we pick it up pick up the stencil and then what we're left with is the design but it's got some nice layers of color okay just ordered some rice paper. I was watching an Elizabeth St. Hilaire video last night and um, she swears by this tissue paper, not tissue paper, I'm sorry. Um, it's a rice paper, um, but I have to, have I ordered it? It's on my shopping list, I know that. It's on my, 
It's in my cart. Let me see, it took up some paper because I left it on a little too long. That's okay, because we're taking this up now. And we're gonna let this dry. And I'm gonna just put this over for a moment. And I'm gonna take my stencil and put it on a clean, just, just copy paper. There, all right. Let's see if we can get any of that color underneath onto the paper. And look at that, we get another print. Very economical when you do it that way. You get all sorts of great stuff. All right, I'm gonna set the stencil to the side. And this has to dry completely so that uh, when we put our final layer on to pick up the Im to pick up the the image on the plate, um, there's no color like you know bleeding or anything like that. We want to try and keep it um, like it is. And you see with the white, it kind of gives it a little bit of a of a glow around the edges. It's not too much. Um, and so we'll come in with the red, pick it up with that. All right, I'm trying to find room for all these things. I, I really don't have a lot of space, so they're going on the floor. That's okay. I seem to get a lot of paint on the edges of my Baron, and I gotta keep an eye on it, because otherwise it'll transfer to something that I don't want it to transfer to, and maybe ruin something, but. So let me clean this guy. think we're gonna wait a couple more minutes and then we'll come back Okay, I think we're uh, dry enough, and uh, I'm gonna take some red. Lay this down. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, but I'm gonna bring in some copper. I want a little shine. Okay, now let me make sure I have some paper ready to pull this one. Set you over here. Sucker out, make sure you get the edge, all the way out to the edges. Just trying to get rid of some of those lines. Set this down. Come in with your baron. And let's get this guy transferred. See what she looks like. Even though I've drawn my little guides here and get the paper straight, but it never works. Not for me. And 
I'm not going to rush this because I don't want to ruin the print or, you know, if the paint is too wet, you can tear the paper. Um, I just want to be gentle. Let's take a peek. That is not ready. So I'm just keep smoothing it out. Um, I'm going to give this a few minutes to dry. I think it needs uh, some sitting time, some baking time. So I'm going to let that um, dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean up. I'll pause the camera and then we'll come back for the big review. Okay, I think it's had long enough. Just uh, maybe I let it sit two minutes. So let's reveal this bad boy. Whoa, check that out. That is fun. The white really gives it a nice accent. And you see some of the copper, but it's not overwhelming. And you see the green, and you see blue. That is awesome. How cool is that? Well, um... Thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And all the products I use will be listed below. Um, and I will also link you to PM Artist Studio and to ePapery so that you can um, get your color wheel download. Um, and I think that's it. I just wanna say thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Etsy shop. I got some new digital on there, gel prints I've done um, that you can download and use in your own artwork or journals or what have you.